Hello, today we have Mark Smith, the CEO of NIOCorp, trading on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol NB. Mark, great to have you today. Greg, thank you for having us. Uh, we're just thrilled to be here. NIOCorp recently announced a $10 million award from the U.S. Department of Defense via the Defense Production Act. Mark, can you please provide an overview of what this agreement entails and what it means for the Elk Creek Project? Uh, with pleasure, I might add. First of all, I'd like to thank President Trump, Vice President Vance, and the White House National Security Team, the Secretary and Deputy Secretary of Defense, the Pentagon's Title III team, and last but not least, our, our entire congressional support out of Nebraska, including Senators Fisher and Ricketts and the entire Nebraska House delegation. Uh, without their help, this would have been a very, very steep hill to climb. So we're just, we're just pleased that they all provided such strong support in this effort. The, the, whole, the whole grant that we received from the Department of Defense has to do with scandium. Scandium uh, is uh, one of those very unique minerals in the world that a lot of people haven't heard of, and it has almost magical capabilities, uh, particularly when it's used in, in, in electronics or when it's alloyed with aluminum, and, and we can make a, a stronger, a lighter, a more corrosion-resistant, and, and a weldable alloy. The, the effort that we're undertaking that's being uh, sponsored by and, and funded by the Department of Defense will allow us to completely update our feasibility study, which then uh, allows us to, to move forward very rapidly with our XM or U.S. Export-Import Bank loan. And this is a, another beautiful thing, I think, about this process with the DOD grant. This is the whole of government working together right now, where the Department of Defense and the U.S. Export-Import Bank both want this project to move forward. They're working together to make it happen. And that is really a wonderful uh, attribute of, of this whole grant that we've gotten is that we can sit here as, as citizens of the United States and know that we have a whole of government action taking place with Elk Creek resources. So we're just thrilled to death uh, to, to announce this and we can't wait to finish our feasibility study update, which would be the latter part of this calendar year. Now this support from the Department of Defense, which you have so enthusiastically explained. How does it accelerate your efforts to establish that vertically integrated Scandium mine to master alloy supply chain here in the United States? Well, first of all, it will allow the project financing for the mine and the above ground processing facility to occur much faster. Once that financing is secured, we have all of our permits in hand, Craig. We don't have to, to go through any permitting nightmare with this project. We have all of our permits in hand. We have ubiquitous support from the local community and the state of Nebraska. So once the financing is done, we will be on our way uh, starting construction and building this project. But it's because of this DOD grant that we will have the, the money that we want to update that feasibility study and put it in a, in a, in a position that the U.S. Export-Import Bank will be ready to act on. Now, Scandium, Mark, you just said that it's not very well known, but it is extremely important, strategically important to the Department of Defense. How could domestic production at Elk Creek impact U.S. national security and defense readiness? Well, that's a, it's a very good question, Craig, and, and a simple one for me to answer. Um, guess which nation in the world largely controls all of the scandium production in the world today? Well, that's China. And, and this just you know, points out yet another very glaring national security risk that we have re related to scandium in that we do not produce any here in the United States. We import 100% of what we need in the United States. And the good news here with the Elk Creek mine, once it's constructed and once uh, the operations are up and running and we're producing scandium, we could become the Saudi Arabia of scandium. 
That's how big this mine is. This one mine, the Elk Creek mine, can produce more scandium than what is produced in the entire world today. We could become the scandium superpower of the world. That's how important this project is. Not only scandium, but also ferroniobium, we want to talk about a little bit, Mark. You've got binding offtakes in place for the majority of your planned ferroniobium and, of course, scandium production. You have a rare earth term sheet with Stellantis. How do these partnerships position NioCorp competitively and help de-risk that path to production? You know, offtake is just critically important to finalizing any type of project financing, uh, particularly on the debt side of the equation. These offtake agreements provide the confidence that the lenders need to have when they're going to lend you this amount of money. I mean, the United States Export-Import Bank is talking about loaning us almost $800 million. Agencies, banks, nobody in the world wants to lend that kind of money unless you have a very high degree of confidence of the, the company's ability to repay that loan. Having those offtake agreements in place really provides the confidence that they're looking for. And we are extremely focused on finalizing the rest of the offtake agreements for all of our products. Now, Mark, as you alluded to a moment ago, your financing efforts have been gaining momentum, including a potential $800 million facility with the Export-Import Bank of the United States, as well as expressions of interest from the United Kingdom Export Finance and the German government. How are these funding tracks progressing, and what is the timeline to a final investment decision? You know, they're all progressing um, very well, Craig, and, and this is a lot of effort. I mean, uh, you have to go through a full risk analysis, full due diligence of the entire project, permitting environmental issues. It, it is a very long and drawn out process, and, and rightly so. I mean, this is taxpayers' money that we will be uh, you know, using for, for loan purposes. And I'll, I wanna make sure that the United States government uh, you know, issues the best loan possible with the lowest risk possible. So we encourage all of the due diligence and all of the communications that have been occurring. We are currently probably at about step 2.5 in a four step process to finalize that, that loan package. And by the way, step three to four is a very short, probably 30 to 45 day uh, uh, period. So it's, it's the very shortest part. So you can now see we are a long ways into the loan process uh, with the uh, Export-Import Bank of the United States. They will be the lead agency or the lead bank on the loan. Uh, the United Kingdom Export Finance and the uh, German government loan guarantee programs uh, will be, they'll have the same level of security, but they'll have smaller portions of the, of the overall loan pie. It, it, having all three agencies may sound complicated, but it actually allows each of the three agencies to maybe rest a little bit more and, and be a little bit more confident in, in the overall project because they're each assuming less total risk at the end of the day. They're assuming their piece of the risk of the total loan pie. So that's also got all three of these entities uh, very engaged in, in the process with us and, and much more comfortable about the total amount of the loan package. But I can see the light at the end of the tunnel here, Craig. And I think that, uh, you know, hopefully sometime around the end of this year or very early part of 2026, we will be done with the, the uh, loan process and, and be able to uh, finalize our equity piece of the project financing and start construction. That's what it's all about. Final question, Mark. What other milestones should investors keep an eye on in the coming months and, of course, what is the core value proposition for NioCorp today? You know, the, the milestones that people can expect, uh, we've been pretty, pretty vocal about uh, in the last two to three weeks, especially as we finished up a, a $45 million fundraising effort in July and set a press release out saying this is precisely how we're going to spend the $45 million that we just raised. And it's all about advancing the project. So we're going to do things like purchase more property. 
we just announced uh, this morning that we had closed on the next parcel of property last Friday. More to come on that. There's more parcels that we're interested in. We love being project owners as opposed to project renters, as I like to describe it. So owning the property is is big. Uh, the DOD grant, uh, that's going to be a, a very uh, big newsworthy item for us. Uh, that, that's that been announced uh, by the time this shows, and uh, we're going to be very proud of that and, and happy to explain to our shareholders how that's the best form of financing anyone can get because it doesn't dilute and you don't have to pay it back. Um, we're going to do uh, additional offtake agreements. Um, those should be uh, coming here in the near future. As we get the offtake agreements in place, that allows uh, the, the uh, uh, government uh, banks to to further the loan process with us. But there's some other things too, the feasibility study update. We're going to have drilling results. Uh, we're doing some infill drilling to, to raise the reserve category from probable to proven. As those drill results come out, we're going to report those so our shareholders can see just how good this ore body is. This is really a fantastic ore body, and we're proud to provide more data on it. We'll also be providing updates to our CapEx estimates, uh, to our, our economic model, to show that the project with new products is going to become even more economically robust. But another item that, that I was thinking about, too, that yeah, I'm happy to talk about, and, and you mentioned just a moment ago, Craig, we're going to be providing more and more information on our desire to build a full supply chain here in America that takes us from mining scandium to actually making parts that contain scandium in them. So we'll be taking the, the ore, turning it into scandium oxide. We'll turn the scandium oxide into master alloy. We'll add it to uh, additional aluminum. Uh, to, to lower the amount of, of ultimate scandium in the product. And we want to make actual parts that will be used by our military, by our commercial uh, partners. So this is going to be a whole build out of the scandium supply chain from mine to parts. So this is going to be a, a very big change for the United States. It's never existed in the nation, it, and, and it, it, you know, it needs to exist in the nation. We're currently importing 100% of what we need for scandium. So this is going to change the way that, that we can negotiate trade agreements with China and other countries as a result. This is a very, very important aspect of our project. Very powerful stuff, Mark. You've given us so much to look forward to. Great having you here today. Thanks for having us, Craig. Uh, we look forward to telling the story as many times as we can. Thank you.